Thank you very much. Um, before we begin, I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country throughout Australia and we pay our respects to their cultures, country and elders past, present and, and emerging. Um, as Claire said, this is the final session of today. And what we'd like to do is present the commissioner's view of the major take homes from what you've heard today. We started today with our Chief Commissioner, Peter Coldrake, Minister Tudge and George Meckler-Dennis, who really set the scene for the rest of the program. We've had some absolutely amazing speakers, as Claire has mentioned, on such a diverse range of interesting and innovative topics where not only have they presented us with some answers and opportunities, but probably posed as many questions as, as answers. So the purpose of the session is to give the, the audience, the commissioners sort of take home and thoughts from today. And what I'd like to do is start with um, Adrian, who will give her views on the first two sessions, um, which were, um, excuse me, I have to remember back to this morning, valuable learnings, the quest for the authentic student voice and leading and managing in a changing dynamic. Over you, Adrian. Uh, thank you, Joan. And I'm coming from Adelaide. Um, so I'd just like to acknowledge that um, we meet in the day in the lands of the Ghana people and I pay my respects to elders past and present and emerging. Um, and before I do my little summary, I would also like to add my thanks from Peter this morning to you, Joan, as well as Justine, Brian and Karen and the team for what has turned out to be a wonderful day and a wonderful program. So congratulations to you all. So yes, my job this afternoon is to summarise the um, valuable learning session from mid-morning this, um, this morning. Um, and I'm going to do it from my perspective and my perspective as a new commissioner. Um, from the authentic student voice session, for me, both in the session, but also listening to commentary throughout the day, but also watching the wonderful chat on the side, um, my take homes were the need to create environments using the word authentic, the need to create environments that encourage and value student input, the need to listen and act on what our students are telling us about their, their experience and what their experience is. But most importantly, um, to challenge ourselves and to set aside our own assumptions about what we think students want in their learning experiences and listen more to what, to what the students want. Um, small, very small personal reflection. I have a second year student at home and most of his study has been in his bedroom. And I think that um, it's a significant lost opportunity for all of the, um, the COVID students, as it were, who have only experienced higher education from their bedrooms. Um, so I think they're, they're very, I suppose they're easy, very easy comments to say. But I think um, as we move out of COVID and start to create new norms for our institutions, noting that we have very many different institutions and all of us are creating our own norms for those institutions, that not listening and acting on what our students are telling us um, will be to our detriment. And this message continued on um, into the second of the morning sessions um, about leadership and through change. Um, and one of the things was the authentic student um, partnerships. And indeed that kept coming in subsequent sessions. But in terms of the other learnings from that leadership um, session, um, the key takeaways take from me um, in what was quite a wide ranging discussion by the end of it were that in times of chaotic change, we need to pause and reflect on our role and purpose. Be clear about what we should change and what we should stay the same. Um, and also the very important conversation that we had about the role of the sector in providing solutions and acting as change agents to worldwide challenges. In that session, look, I could summarise a whole lot of other themes from that session, but I'm sticking with what the session was intended to be rather than what it actually turned into, which was delightful. Um, and I think if we look through the questions and the chat, um, 
not today when we're all tired, but you know, in, in the next few weeks, I think we'll find a wealth of really information in interesting sessions for next year's conference, which I hope will be um, in person and um, that can, can explore more what started to emerge in that session, which was about the diversity of our sector and what our sector means going forward for Australia. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Um, I'd like to follow on by the next two panel sessions, which were responsive regulation in a pandemic and new perspectives whoops, whoops, and the promise of diversity, sculpting a changing sector. Um, just quickly, because I realise we're running out of time, I think one of the important messages from uh, Valerie was even in this time of COVID and change, the importance of the re-registration for maintaining the integrity of the, of the sector and the quality of the sector, I think that came through quite strong. I think the other thing that came through by all three speakers was the fact that when you're facing the situation as we have done with COVID after the last, over the last 18 months, the data that we have simply was not useful. It didn't provide us what we needed in looking forward and getting some indication of what was happening. I think there was a similarity between how both ASQA and TEXA approached their responsibility of regulation during COVID and the fact that that flexibility is going to continue as we emerge from COVID. Um, I think for those in the sector listening, an important message from TEXA, there's two things to take home. One is that we are reviewing our risk assessment framework and we'll be out consulting with the sector next year. And the other is that we are reviewing our re regulatory approach. So two important messages. Um, I found the diversity in sculpting for a, a, a changing sector to be a really interesting se session. And I think out of all of it, one of the most important things came um, and I think Liz expressed it was out of every challenge or problem, there's always a positive outcome you can find. And even for all of them, when we were listening to um, Susan talk about the Indigenous students' experience and her long shopping list of what they did, but how many of them turn out to be very positive and things that they will carry on with um, out of um, Trish from Victoria University and her block design, they'd only just bedded it down the first year, were preparing for their second year and COVID hit. And yet they've learned from that. They've learned that perhaps a blended uh, learning environment suits some students more than others. So are, are, are offering both. Um, the partnerships that we heard about with students, the co-creation, I think that's the authentic student voice we've heard about right through today and the importance of building those partnerships and relationships and the importance of staff as well as students in those and care for both. And I think um, I was particularly impressed with Liz's presentation on how at the very beginning she offered the students the opportunity, well, we'll just stop everything and wait for it to go away or we can jump in the deep end and do something about it. And out of it emerged that amazing digital theatre experience of 2020. So for all those listening, there are so many lessons in there that can be applied next year as we go out of COVID and go forward. Particularly, I mean, things that will improve or value add to the sector as a whole. But so many things that will improve the student experience, the student engagement, and that partnershiping with students, which... If you've been looking at the chat, several students have commented on. So I think there's so much we can take from it, but I better hand over to Steve because we've run out of time anyway, sorry, um, for the last four briefing sessions. Sorry, Steve, over to you. Thank you, Joan. And uh, thanks for the opportunity of commenting on, uh, on the final uh, uh, set of four uh, presentations and uh, uh, they were uh, exceptionally um, uh, good to demonstrate the importance of quality and integrity of the sector in Australia, what that brings uh, for us internationally, and the reason why the Australian uh, 
uh, higher education uh, providers and the sector are uh, so well regarded uh, by uh, the international marketplace and why up until now students have clamoured uh, to want to learn uh, about um, Australia and, uh, and how uh, they can uh, get value from being, in, uh, being involved with the Australian uh, sector both now, but as Carolyn said, uh, they are the ambassadors uh, for the future and, uh, and they will when they become uh, captains of industry or, uh, or uh, bureaucrats in uh, decision-making power or even prime ministers of countries, uh, how important they will be down the track. So the value to uh, and the quality of the sector is so important in, uh, in continuing that uh, 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 that confidence uh, in uh, Australian education. Uh, however, our um, guest from the UK showed that uh, the rest of the world is moving fast, particularly with micro-credentials, and the need for us to, uh, to move ever faster, not just to keep up, but to, to be at the forefront of, of uh, provision of uh, industry, uh, integrated and relevant education for people both at, at, at the higher education providers or in industry uh, as well. And that was, uh, again, emphasised uh, more, uh, even more clearly by the presentation by uh, uh, Peter Dawkins and Martin Bean. And uh, it's good to see, Claire, that uh, three... Uh, ex or current uh, RMIT people are involved today. Congratulations on the great job you did uh, throughout the day. Uh, I'm not sure how you uh, kept up with, uh, with the uh, flow, but I've had the pleasure of working closely with Peter Dawkins, both at Victoria University and at Unisuper. So, uh, um, but their, their paper and their recommendations to the minister uh, gives us a pathway to see how industry uh, can add value to students and how our sector can add value to both students and, and industry, both here uh, and importantly offshore as well. And uh, 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 a very important presentation uh, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the way that TEXA is taking uh, a forward-looking approach, particularly with contract cheating uh, and the excellent presentation by my Monash colleague, uh, Helen Ganeel, on, uh, on the action that, uh, uh, that TEXA has already taken and the value that will add to the, both the integrity and quality of the sector, but more importantly, on the ability of students to rely on the sector to continue to stand up to these, uh, uh, these international uh, uh, commercial cheating organisations. Reminds me a little bit... Uh, uh, of uh, cyber security and the need to be constantly aware and uh, trying to keep ahead of the game because you can rest assured as we close some, some doors, uh, they will find some other windows and doors open uh, that they can, uh, they, they can continue their service. So we need to be ever vigilant and Helen demonstrated that there is a lot of uh, proactivity going on. So an excellent cream at the end of the day, Claire, and I'll hand back to you, but I'd like to recognise also uh, Justine Baranoskas and her team. They've done a fabulous job. All yours, Claire. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Can I just, sorry, Claire. I, I <laughs> would just like to take a couple of seconds to thank you on behalf of TEXA and all the delegates for a fantastic job today. It wasn't easy, I know, chairing a virtual conference with 900 delegates typing in chat and questions. And we really appreciate your um, efforts in managing it all so well. It's an excellent job, thank you. And I too would like to thank Justine and the engagement team for managing this so well. And I'm sure the delegates have appreciated it. So thanks, Claire.